and welcome to today's podcast where we are going to be talking about the musical links between two isolated cultures. That's right, we're going to be talking about the similarities between two cultures' music that have never seen each other. Well, they probably have seen each other, but no influence whatsoever. Alright, let's get right into it. So, today, the selections we have are Centipede by Knife Party Productions, and it is a dubstep piece, and we have a performance by Lewis Burns on the Didgeridoo, uh, representing some aboriginal music from indigenous Australians. Um, I'll put the links to the videos in the description. I don't want to play them on my video because of copyright and that's just stealing other people's work. Go give them the credit they deserve. Um, that is if you would like to listen. If you don't, that's fine. But it would help a lot. Um, some of the similarities between them, uh, they're both dance pieces. They both have a distinct structure and people dance to it. You know, it's you can write down um, you can write down the uh, like the A B C A sections and people will know every time you perform it um, when you're gonna change. Um, of course uh, Aboriginal music is uh, quite a lot older than dubstep and it actually started out as more of a chant so it didn't start out as dance music but it evolved into dance music um, that's one little difference but we're talking about similarities they're both dance pieces um, next point uh, they both manipulate their tone quite a lot for effect. So in the dubstep, it's called wobble bass. It's where you have the wah 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 sound. And uh, there's also some uh, manipulation of vowel sounds with your throat when you play the didgeridoo. Um, and they both have similar effects. And it just gives it a lot more depth to the sound. And it's, it's like articulation without using your tongue. It's articulation with tone, and that's something I found pretty interesting about the similarities between these two pieces. Um, our next similarity is their use of a sub bass or drone. Um, it's a little bit different, but the general idea is the same. Uh, in dubstep, very low sub bass is used, um, and in Aboriginal music, uh, the uh, didgeridoo, it, it's not often performed by itself. Um, the didgeridoo takes the role of the bass line or the drone. Um, so for the next similarity, um, they both have complex and quote-unquote fast rhythms. So uh, depending on how you look at it um, or how you notate it, it would be like 16th notes, like about that fast. I'm just guessing here. Um, in dubstep, it's more syncopated, but both have pretty fast and complex rhythms. Um, and for our last point, um, neither musical culture uses very many uh, vocals. Of course, uh, the didgeridoo would go along with a chant, but by itself, as is in uh, Mr. Burns' performance, um, there's no vocals. Uh, of course, he can use his throat 
in the same way he would he would be like speaking while he's playing and that produces different tones um, but there's not really any vocals and in Knife Party Centipede there is some vocals but it's pretty minimal it's a uh, talking sample at the beginning and it's just the word centipede throughout um, so very minimal um, and most dubstep does not have any vocals um, and I think that wraps it up um, so yeah once again the similarities between these are the saw like bass sound of them um, the complex rhythms uh, they're both traditionally used um, for dance and the manipulation of their tone is pretty unique to these two cultures um, you don't see that in very many other cultures just the manipulation of tone to that effect to that magnitude um, and these two particular cultures don't use a lot of vocals yeah, thank you for tuning in. It was pretty short and a little bit choppy and rough, but I'm running low on time. I will see you all in the non-existent next one.